Hey everybody, it's me, Super Paul Games. Apparently I have vodka withdrawal. Uh, the character, not me. I haven't had any vodka today. Maybe I have withdrawal too. How y'all doing? Welcome back to Fallout New Vegas. Me and Rex just left, uh... What is this? Bone Knockers Casino? <laughs> uh, where we... F uh, confronted Benny's men. Benny escaped. And his robot... The eyes of the mighty Kaisar are upon you. He admires your accomplishments and bestows upon you the exceptional gift of his mark. Any crimes you may have perpetrated against the Legion are hereby forgiven. Kaisar will not extend this mercy a second time. My lord requires your presence at his camp at Fortification Hill. His mark will guarantee your safe conduct to our lands. Incidentally, it will interest you to know that the man you seek has fled the Strip and is likely making haste for Kaisar's camp as we speak. Thanks, wolf dude. How'd you know I was here? I am the greatest of Kaisar's frumentari. It was not a challenge to find you. Nor is this my first visit to the Strip. Why does uh, Kaisar want to see me, bro? Go to him, and you will understand. Seek Kaisar by way of Cottonwood Cove, south of Nelson. The Kursor Lukulus will be waiting. All I heard you say was, You hear that, Rex? That guy's a moron. Why am I so slow? Oh, I'm carrying a ton of shit. Hey, who are you? Hey, yes, man. What are you doing out here? Oh, hi again. Can I help you with something else? Uh, yeah, no. I'd see you later, bro. Don't stay away too long. All right. At least I know I don't have to go back inside to see him. He says we can take over, uh, Mr. House's stuff. Not his, like, junk. I'm gonna go dump some of this crap. Ugh, take a big old poop. And then we're Did gonna... Did you know the strip's all stirred up lately? I didn't say you could talk to me. Oh, I'm not gonna kill you. There are guards right there. <laughs> we're gonna check out a casino in a moment. Alright, uh, I took care of our vodka addiction. Yes Man said we could should get to know the three tribes, the three casino heads. So that if we do take him up on his idea to take over Mr. House in Vegas, that we know who to like and who to get rid of. So let's check out while we're here. Might as well take it a little bit easy. We can always get Benny later. Go we'll pee in the fountain. The Ultra Lux. The Ultra Lux. Is it Swedish? <laughs> Hello, Swedes. I've come to gamble. I'm here for some fancy times, for I am a fancy lad of the wasteland. How's everybody doing? I love waiting during loading screens. Beg your pardon, but could I trouble you to turn over your weapons? Ah, you're creepy. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep. Uh, oh, I wanna keep the holdout weapons, but I'm not good at sneaking. Yeah, here's your weapons. My deepest apologies for the slightest inconvenience. You have my assurance that everything will be returned upon your departure. But we simply can't have anyone waving their weapons around in the hotel. It's not the atmosphere we wish to cultivate. Please, enjoy your stay. I think y y you want to cultivate the creepy Adieu. ass atmosphere with those creepy masks. Um, man, the colors are trippy in here. If I was on acid, this would be fucking ballsy good time. It's my stripper name. Hey, everybody who wants to see ballsy good time. Woo! This cowboy likes it. What's up, bro? You watch yourself around, Mr. Gunderson. You watch it. What's up, Hillbilly? They let you come in here with a gun? What the fuck's this shit? Beg your pardon, stranger, but I'm looking for someone. You ain't seen a young man with dark brown hair and a white hat on lately, have you? Uh, I, I am. Uh, why is your goatee coming off your face? Uh, no, I ain't seen someone like that, old man. <sighs> ain't nobody got one darn piece of news about my boy. Not one lousy speck of information. Ain't got one Brahmin unaccounted for across a dozen ranches, but I'm here for an hour and my own son just up and disappears on me. So what, man? He's a kid. He's probably all having fun. My boy, Ted. He was right here. I didn't leave him but a minute. I told him to stay put while I talked some things over with the White Glove folks. He was never one to stay tied down to a spot, though. Gets that from his mother. Got most of my staff out looking for him now. I'd be out myself, but I keep hoping he'll show up back here. Of course, if he does that, I'll whoop him till his skinny hide turns to leather for putting me through this. 
But that don't mean I wouldn't be grateful. You have a weird way of showing you're grateful. I'm glad to see you, and I'm going to beat you! Uh, what business you do here, old man? That's between me and the White Glove Society. But let's just say they control the food supply around here, and I got lots of food to give. But that ain't as welcome as you might think. Why not? You think these creeps <laughs> would be happy to get what they could get? Sir Rancher? Yep, got a whole mess of Brahmins to my name. Bighorners, too. Used to just have the one ranch, but land was easy to grab before the soldiers moved in. Before I knew it, I was running one of the biggest ranching operations east of California. Now, everywhere I go, folks I never even met shake my hand and call me Mr. Gunderson. Don't quite know what to make of that. Prime means your name's Mr. Gunderson. <laughs> hey, where's your bodyguard get a gun? I don't get one. Made me a special arrangement with the hotel. They want to do business with me, they got to play by my rules. A lot of people out there resent success. Might want to take a swipe at me. This makes them think twice. If I'd have been thinking, though, I'd have had him watching my boy instead. Then none of this would have happened. Uh, so what'd you say about the White Gloves? They're the people that run this shithole. That's what they call themselves, the folk that run this place. They're the ones dressed all fancy with their bow ties and shiny dresses. Some of them got masks, too. Real hard to trust folks like that. A couple of them show their faces, and that's who I do my business with. I don't talk to none of the other ones. Can't trust a man in a mask. What happened to your boy? I'd be more than happy to have you. Heck, I'll hire anybody with a pair of legs and at least one good eye at this point. There'd be a lot of money in it for you if you can get him back to me safe. And if he ain't, you can bet I'll pay for the names of the sons of bitches responsible. It was my ex-girlfriend. She did it. <laughs> All right, I'll go look for your kid. I'll be here. It's a good place to uh, take care of business. You're like, I'm just going to sit and drink. Hey, freaky. Salute. Welcome to Top Shelf. The drinks cost twice as much during happy hour, but they draw twice the attention, too. So I can get some creepy... Uh... Let's see what we have to sell, freak face. I hope she's not a burn victim. I'd feel bad then. I'd be like, what's with your mask, free face? It shows like it's on fire. No, I feel a oh, scotch. I want scotch and whiskey. Thanks. Now go suck Give a me dick. a shout if you need anything. No. Adieu. Do you get like a heat rash in there under your mask? I'm gonna make this better. Look at me! I'm playing motherfucking blackjack! And this is how it goes! Woo! Look at me. Rex, Rex, don't turn your back on me. Rex is like, I can't take him anywhere. Charlie Dicksucker goes where he wants. I'm part of the NCR! Where am I going? Oh, apparently there's shit back here. Is this where angels go to die? I'm beautiful. Uh, what's up? Humbly at your service. I'd like you to go suck some dicks. A pleasure doing business. <laughs> I think he's gonna go do that right now. Move it, Rex. I'm busy paying people to suck dicks. Not yours, though. No dog dick sucking. Good day. What's up? How may I be of service, sir? Nice hat, Mortimer. Can you tell me about your organization? My, such a popular question. I suppose it is only natural to see us and wonder what it is that makes us special. Your top hat? The White Glove Society has only just made itself known to the public, of course. But our pedigree was established over generations. Were we always so refined? <laughs> I'd be lying if I said yes. But I've always felt we were destined for a place atop modern society. And now, here we are. Not everyone can wear the finest clothes and eat the finest foods, obviously. That's just the reality we live in. But surely we can agree that the most tasteful, sophisticated people are the most deserving. And that's what the White Glove Society is all about. I disagree. I think the most deserving are babies, so give those babies some scotch and steaks. Uh, do you have any work that needs to be done? I do, but I need someone I know I can rely on, and I haven't heard a thing about you. 
Perhaps if you made more of a name for yourself around the Strip, we could talk. But not before. My name's Charlie Dicksucker. Now you've heard of me. Give me money. Bye! Indeed. I hate you. <laughs> Rex, did you see me do that? Rex, yeah. Come on, let's go. Quit being a douche. Um, what, what are we looking at? Good day. Why is it so dark in here? It's not a racial thing. Like, it's really dark. Um, why is everybody here dressed up and wearing masks? Those are all members of the White Glove Society. Our founder, Marjorie, gave us all a dress code. There's only one rule to it. In her words, we must dress in such a way that no one can be said to have dressed better than us. As for the masks, I'm not allowed to tell you. We're sworn to secrecy. Actually, that's not true. That's just what we're supposed to say. I think Marjorie likes them for the mystery they create, and the way they make it clear that we're different from everyone else. But you didn't hear that from me. Great secret. And everybody's fucking creepy. Where's your mask? Mm, must have forgotten to put it on. How embarrassing. Uh, I'm looking for somebody. Oh, well, it's a big hotel. You should talk to Marjorie. She's in charge, and she can probably help you find anyone you might need. She usually works at the front of the Gourmand. She likes to see how people respond to it. You can get to the Gourmand from the lobby here. It's a big set of double doors on the first floor of the eastern side. Can't miss it. If I had dynamite, I would blow you up. Farewell. Yeah, you're lucky I don't have dynamite. Rex, he told us to go somewhere, but I wasn't paying attention. There's a penthouse that I'm not good enough to get into. There's a door I can pick. Don't chase me, Chauncey. Have you seen Marjorie? You Marjorie Mortimer. He said, go somewhere and talk to someone. Uh, not the bathhouse. He said the gourmand? There we go. I knew I'd find it sooner or later. I just wander long enough. Are you Marjorie? Are you Marjorie? Ooh, what's in here? Hey, bitches! The Gomad move it fast. Fart. Almost accidentally stole the wine. You look positively famished. Uh, you simply can't have that. Uh, uh, I gotta go. Farewell. You're creeping me the fuck out, creeples. What can I get you? Um, normal people, please. Pleasure speaking to you. Yeah. I hope I don't dream about you. It'll be like a sex dream. And then she turns around and I see her face. I'll be like, no! Hello, Marjorie. How Welcome to the Ultralux. I do hope it exceeds your every expectation. If I wanted to go to a place where I got creeped out, then yes. Uh, heck, Gunderson said he was in business with you. What else? Mr. Gunderson and I have been discussing his livestock. It's put us in a rather delicate position, you see, his coming here. Not that we aren't grateful for his generous offer. But our executive chef, Philippe, has transformed Brahmin steak into a delicacy. He really is a genius. Everyone wants it. But a delicacy is just that. Delicate. If everyone can get it, it ceases to be a delicacy. It becomes a perfectly ordinary staple. And if the gourmand serves staples, it would no longer draw the caliber of people it deserves. It would be a diner or a family restaurant. So as much as we'd all love for there to be enough steak for everyone, I'm afraid there are more important things to consider. This would not be a family restaurant because all the kids would be crying at the weirdos in mass. So you're saying you're creating an artificial lack of supply of steak or Brahmin to drive the price up. I see what's going on here. Uh, you work here, I take it? I do, but one can hardly call it work. <laughs> Sorry. I think of myself as a caretaker rather than a common laborer. I suppose it is a labor of love if it can be called labor at all. We at the White Glove Society are all responsible for maintaining the beauty and class of the Ultra Lux. And as its founder, I suppose it falls to me to decide how we go about it. Caretaker? You mean like Mr. Torrance? I'm looking for somebody who was m m missing some kid. This again? I thought this was all settled. I answered every one of that investigator's questions to his satisfaction and gave all the help I could. I know our reputation hasn't always been spotless, but that's all in the past now. 
How some people can't get over it is beyond me. For the last time, the White Glove Society has never and will never consume human flesh for any reason. It's written in the Charter. What? What? Wait. Wait. Your organization needs to have it written in the Constitution that you don't want to eat human meat? That's a little fucked up. Who did you talk to about the disappearance of the kid? There was an investigator who came through here last week. He'd been hired by a young man whose bride-to-be went missing during their stay here. Well, you can already guess what probably happened, can't you? It seems perfectly likely that she got cold feet and ran off. And that young groom just didn't have a clue, the poor dear. Or someone went to eat her out when they took it out literally. Um, so your organization used to eat people? Now, didn't I already tell you that we don't do that sort of thing? We do not engage in cannibalism here under any circumstances. Though we haven't always been the White Glove Society. There was another time, a dark time, when we went by a different name. But that's all changed now. We've evolved past such base impulses since settling into our new home. I've seen to it that those days are behind us. So... I'm gonna lie. It's alright. I eat people too. I eat them all the motherfucking time. Why, today I just ate a lady. She was delicious. You can tell me the truth. You disgust me. <laughs> How dare you say such a filthy thing in my establishment? I ought to have you arrested. Uh. You'll kindly mind your tongue or we shan't speak any further. Guess I won't be eating you. Mmm. Uh, is there any way I can talk to that investigator? Why, yes, I think so. If he hasn't checked out yet, that is. I had our Mater D Mortimer offer him a complimentary room for as long as it took for him to be satisfied. You see, the White Glove Society remains the very picture of courtesy, even in the face of such impolite accusations. We have nothing to hide here. I'm investigating someone else, though. A man. A kid who went recently missing. A man? Well, then this... Well, this can't be. Two disappearances in my hotel? What will people say? I'm going to have a word with my staff about security on the premises. Whether these people are found or not, our guests simply must feel safe in their own rooms. Did you cook them and eat them? Goodbye! Ta-ta! I like your ta-tas. Oh, score! Rex, did you see that? You see what I did there? Are you impressed? Where am I going? <laughs> I was just like, yes! Make a great exit! Run away! Run the fuck away. I think what we need to do is go talk to Mortimer. Because he talked to the, um... Who the fuck's Mortimer? Mortimer! I'm lost! Son of a bitch. Well, I'm gonna go find Mortimer. Next time we'll talk to him. I really am lost. Oh, there he is. I knew where it was all the time. I'll see y'all next time. We can find out if they're eating people.